uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to present, uh, give you guys a quick glimpse of what we're going to go over using the PowerPoint. Then we're going to go and do a kind of a live shot here. Uh, this was a hands-on uh, presentation that we did from before. Um, so it was supposed to go like, you know, I should show you something and then we kind of go back and forth. But since this has turned into like a more of a show versus a uh, show and follow along thing. So it's going to be kind of how we're going to roll with it. So the first thing that we're going to kind of talk about here is automation and best practices. Um, we're going to start with the part properties, you know, like why do we need our part properties? Um, why do we need property tab builder? Then we're going to start diving into the creating templates, uh, link the properties to title block, modify the existing template and sheet format files, and then getting into some drawing automation that might help us out. Uh, if we can automate some of our drawings that gets us out of doing a lot of the drawing work that we all know and uh, would rather not do, right? We want to be in the modeling world, so if we can make this faster, that's what we're going to try and do. So I'm from Colorado, right, in Denver area, so I kind of made this little uh, computer stand board, if you would. It's kind of like a regular ATX form factor. It's got the holes where the holes should go. Um, just kind of hollowed it out, made some cool design there, so I wasn't using so much material. Um, made it kind of cheap. It's pretty cool. It sits under my TV with um, a bunch of computer parts on it. I kind of use it as my little uh, internet surfer for the big screen there. So part properties, we'll dive into this. So why do we need part properties? Well, a lot of times we will use it for revision control. We'll throw, you know, a description on our part. We'll throw part numbers on our part. Everything might be a custom thing. Uh, we can then do SOLIDWORKS mass properties. So anything that's SOLIDWORKS related, so like a weight or material is a great example. Uh, those will get automatically brought in. So that way we don't have to fill that information out a bunch of times. Uh, if we change it from, you know, a brass to a steel, it's going to automatically update that field. And then that field, then we can bring that into our drawing. So that way we're not filling out that information three or four times. Uh, we just have to do it once and it gets brought in. Then we start getting into like downloadable parts, right? So if we were to download from a vendor, that might come with a bunch of these uh, property fields already done for us. You know, it might have, you know, who you download it from, what the part number is when, you know, from the downloaded website, um, how it was manufactured, what the color scheme is, all that kind of stuff. So you never know what you're going to get when you download that uh, specific part, but a lot of times it already is pre-populated. That can help us out for like our BOMs and stuff like that, right? Um, knowing where to get specific parts from, knowing that if you actually manufacture Actually, it or if you bought it can be another big part there. Another big thing that we can do here to help speed this up is property tab builder. So what this is going to allow us to do, let me go back one slide, is it's going to allow us to have all of these properties. Um, it can be different. Uh, you might have one part that's very specific to one customer, and he gets everything from uh, you know, he wants his stuff filled out in a certain way. Um, then we have like a different customer who wants to have their stuff filled out in a certain way. So each part property configuration here can be slightly different. So that's why we get into the property tab builder. Uh, the property tab builder is going to make this a lot easier to do. What it does is it's a separate file that we can load into SOLIDWORKS. Uh, we kind of make it our own. Um, then once we get that brought in, uh, it's easily to be filled out. We can then kick that back into our property fields. So the good news is why do we need these? Well, it's a standard list of property fields. So if I were to tap back real quick, you know, you might have revision drawn by, but if you have drawn with a space by versus drawn by all one word here, when you pull that into some kind of bomb or a field, it's not the same, right? So having strict um, spaces or spelling of a certain way, that's going to affect everything else. So if we can keep these errors uh, down to a minimum, it's going to 
make it so that we're not having to backtrack and figure out how we're even doing spelling. So that's going to be the big part here is that everything's going to be spelled correctly. It's going to be in the right field. It's going to do everything for us there. So big thing here is we want to decrease the human errors and typos. The other part is um, if we had different uh, part property fields we want to do, we can actually make different part property builders files and then just load in the correct one that we want to use. This is how we're going to start this. I'll show you how to start, how it opens, what the finished product will look like. This is super simple right here. It can always get way more complicated than this, and I'll show you how. From there, I'll show you how to like, you know, the interface, the building blocks, how to build the options here. So you can see like this is all going to be on that downloadable website that Chris kind of kicked out for us, and we'll go through all these different steps here and highlighted what we're trying to do. Just kind of giving you a quick glimpse over uh, this stuff. Then we'll get to this guy here in a second. So I'm gonna exit out of this guy so that we can get into the property tab builder here. So here's my part, you know, just so that we can kind of see it. I'm gonna go up to the property fields and you can see that there's nothing in here. Uh, right, I can always go through and type something in here. You know, that text. Right, you can see I'm doing like a lot of typing to get all this stuff in there. I might go to the next one, the next one, the next one. Uh, I can always select maybe from a field. I don't have a field listed. Uh, I'm just going to throw in a few of these. Right, and a lot of people, they might have hundreds, but some people might have 10 or 12, kind of all depends. What a lot of people don't know is that you can bring it apart, and if you just select these and you hit the delete key, you can delete them. You can actually copy these if you have one versus the other. You can actually grab a bunch of these using the shift key or control key, copying it, deleting it, pasting it into another part. Um, you can do that. So a lot of people don't know that. Uh, so that's one thing that can be help speed some stuff up. So I just hit the delete key and you can see it took out all of those property fields there. The main thing is I'm just going to show you there's nothing here. So in order to get to the property tab builder, there's two different ways. The first way is if we go to our home screen over here, click on that home one right there, there's property tab builders, this one. Or you can always go back to our search. And it is like a, an app that's through the Windows uh, icons here. Either way, it gets you the same spot. So it looks like this. The first thing first here is we have group boxes, text boxes, list, numbers, check boxes, uh, like a radio button and a group list. The first thing first is this group box. So under a group box, it's kind of like this guy over here on the right. See how it's kind of split with some lines here? That's what this group box is doing. So you have one group box for this, you have another group box for this, and another one for here. So that's what this group box is uh, meant to do. These other ones are like our Lego set. So we have like a text box that can go into our group box. We have a list, a number, a check box, a radio button and maybe a group that might go into this box. So let's get into that. Just trying to make sure I'm not skipping ahead of myself. All right. So the first thing that we want to do is this is a drag and drop method here. So I'm going to take my text box. And I'm going to drag and drop it into my group box. The group box is also titleable. Um, yeah, I can change the group name, right? So the caption here might be part data to try and keep some stuff organized. And we'll see this come to play in a second. Uh, the expanded versus collapse is always a nice thing. So if it's expanded, it's pretty much defaults, meaning that it's always just going to be an expanded list. If it's collapsed, means that we're out to hit a button for it to expand the list that we want. So you can see if I click the text box, I get other stuff here. And I can need to change the name. I don't want to say text box. That's kind of meaningless at the moment. So what we might want to do is say uh, like revision. 
hopefully I'm spelling this stuff right. Right, and then we can copy that and paste it here. And this is going to be a text. Um, so we'll keep it in a text field. These configurations, meaning that you know, it's going to show on the configuration tab or it's going to be on the configuration specific tab. Um, so this is a way to be able to control some of that stuff here. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to grab a list and we're going to drag that into our group box. And you can see I can move that up or down. It all kind of depends. So the list, right, this might be something like drawn by. Copy that, paste it here. And my list is I can pre-populate my list. So let's say that drawn by, I have, you know, me. Uh, I have Chris. Who else is out here? Maybe Chuck. Maybe a couple of Daves. Right? Yeah, I might be able to populate that with um, the engineers that already work here. There might be a custom value here. So let's say that, well, this might come from a vendor or something. I can have like, you know, some custom values here, or maybe I have an outside uh, contractor, you know, might be able to populate his name in there. So if these aren't the names available, I can always say like, allow a custom value here. Okay, the next thing that I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna grab a text box again, but I'm gonna drag it underneath everything. And this is going to be date. Now, I don't want to just be able to select a specific date, right? I want to be able to say that it is a date. If I say a text, eh, it's kind of cool, but I'd have to fill that out. Um, if I say date, when I load this up here in a second, it will actually bring up a date window box, okay? So that's going to be pretty cool to see because that way it gives us a way to like select a specific date. Um, it's just a, nice, a neat little thing that some people just don't know about. Okay, so I'm going to stop here, and I'm just going to go ahead and save this out. Uh, you can, I'm going to stuff it on the desktop here. Notice it says template. It should be fine. This should be, you know, maybe like a WebEx type thing, um, just so that keep things a little simple. Uh, I'll go ahead and save it. So now I have saved this file. All right. The next thing that I need to do. And you can keep this open, we can just minimize it, is I need to point my options there. So I need to go to Tools and Options. And I go to File Locations. And there is one called Property Tab. I have to go find it. Let me make sure I'm grabbing the right one. Custom Property Files, that's what I'm looking for. There it is. So I have it specified to looking at my desktop. Um, you might have a server location where you have all of these stashed on your server. Um, that's perfectly fine too. Uh, you just have to make sure that you're looking at this custom property files and you've pointed that to that specific point. We're gonna say okay. So in order to load this, I'm gonna go to my property, my custom properties button down over here. You can see that I can bring out several of these. So the right, I only have one stash on my desktop, so that's where it kind of comes up. So if I apply that or if I select it, now you can see that I have revision. So just to reiterate, nothing is here and or here. So revision might be A, drawn by, right? Here's my list. I can either type in my name uh, or a different name, I guess, or I can use the drop down, right? The date, again, if I hit the arrow, it gives me a little date a calendar to kind of select from. Highlights with red what the current date is. I can go ahead and select that and fill this in. I can apply this. So once I have applied it, right? And remember, I was on the custom buttons. I don't know if you guys were able to see that. So I'm going to go back here, here. But I put it on the custom tabs, right, versus this other one. And you're going to have to do that to each one of these. Otherwise, it gets kind of messed up. So do pay attention to that. So the expanded, right? Go ahead and say okay to this. All that means is here's our arrow. It already comes expanded when you load this in.
But once I hit the apply button here, it applies all of that to here. And then I don't have to type it all in. Right? I didn't have to type in this date. I didn't have to type in Craig. I only had to type in revision A. So we're getting there. Um, so let's go back to that property tab. Let's add another, let's add some more stuff. All right, so this is what we're gonna try and do. We're gonna grab our group box and we're gonna drop it in here. We're gonna say that this is a customer. I'm gonna keep that expanded. I'm gonna have like another list maybe that might go in here. The customer might be a customer list. And the list might can, you know, have a bunch of values. So it might be, you know, CATI, it might be, I don't know where you guys are from, but um, ABC, I guess, always works. Uh, couple values, some letters, et cetera. I can also show the custom values and I wanna make sure it's pushing onto the right tab here. So this is just our customer list. Um, the next thing we might wanna do is say like a project number. So I'll grab like um, number field. Let's see what that one looks like. Right, so we can see it just comes with like a value of a number. That might not be what we want. So we can just take that off. So instead it might be like a list or a text box. So text box, we can always give this a, uh, a number here. Text field, right? It's not a yes or no, it's just text right over here. There we go. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna grab another group box and we're gonna call this manufacturing details. So I'm gonna try and use some of these other buttons down here so that we can see this. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a text box and I'm gonna say something like material. In the text field here, you can grab uh, certain materials, right? So you can see if I had applied a material, SolidWorks will read that material in. So Anything that, you know, can be from over here, right? Materials are currently not specified, but if I were to give it a specific material, it would then populate here with that material. Same thing, we can do that with weight, right? You grab another text box. And we could say something uh, like mass. Make sure it's on the right button here, right? And you can see down here, it's kind of coming into that mass one. The checkbox here, I wanna throw that here. This might be something like paint in house. If it's checked, right, we're gonna do something. If it's not checked, we might do something else. So this is where you can get kind of fun with it um, or complicated. So in our group list, I might put that here. And this might be something like um, paint scheme, or paint colors or finish or something. I don't know if I like this one. Let's take that back out. Let's bring in another, just a group box. Try and keep it a little bit more simplistic. And I can create like a, a radio button instead. So with the radio button, right? Is it paint in house? You have your couple different radio radio buttons. So this might be something like uh, none. Oh, caption finish. We have like no finish. We might be like sandblast. And here's where you can adjust what those buttons are, how many do you need. Uh, so maybe six is a little extensive. 
for sand ballast, uh, paint, and heat treat. Oops. So just kind of filling this out, um, get to that here in a second. So if we say paint in-house and I have it checked, I want this group box here to be available. Okay, so it says if checked, make this group box. Because if I say checked, paint in-house, I want it to also have those finish details or something like that. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, give this a try. So we'll go ahead and save this, right, we'll minimize it. And I'm going to reset this. Sometimes it's easier just to give this a close. See if it doesn't reapply. There we go. So again, we kind of go through this whole thing, A, drawn by Chris this time, what the date might be, customer list, right, CHEI, what the project number might be, manufacturing details comes out, so the material is not specified, so maybe we need to specify it with some ABS. Now it's our ABS plastic. Yeah, we're going to paint it in-house. Notice if I hit the checkbox, bam. Oh, we need to fix our radio buttons, but you can kind of see that then we have what finish are we going to do. So we don't have that quite settled, but that's just um, something to, to double check in this guy. Oops. Keep messing with this button here. I want that group box to be like so. Um, yeah, so that you can see that we just kind of messed up a little bit on get out of here right so our values need to go in this area not the not the value here so yeah so that's pretty much the gist of the property tab builder um, cool things that you can also do so I can have this saved as several different parts remember so again if I'm manufacturing from like Boeing versus SpaceX you know they might have a completely different list of properties that they want on their drawing um, the other thing is is you might do file save as. Notice this is a part template. You might have another need for like an assembly template, right? So you can actually save this as a, an assembly template if you needed to. And that way you can pull that in as an assembly as well. All right. So that's kind of what it looks like. Once I uh, apply this, Right. It's going to get applied back to here. So you can see here's all of my finishes. Um, that checkbox, right, 13, that was just said if we're going to paint it in house as checked. Yeah, we're going to paint it, right? That's just what we have uh, figured out there. So we're going to go to OK. And I think I'm going to try and change this to maybe a plain carbon steel for now. The weight's going to be crazy, but at least we can see it. So again, trying to wrap this part up before we dive into some other stuff. The big takeaways here are, right, we want to reduce our errors. In order to reduce our errors, we're going to set something up so that we can't have any errors. It's pretty much just a checkbox. You put in the right names, et cetera. If you have people that come in, you know, and they're not part of your organization, I showed you how you can, op you know, you can just save over the top of it. So if I really didn't want to, I can save this, I can close it. I can then reopen property tab, right? And I can go ahead and open up another one of these files. Opens up, I can go through here in my drawn by and I can change out the names here if I need to. Uh, so yeah, keep that in mind that it is a certain file. You can open, you can edit, you can change it, modify it, et cetera. So again, trying to use this to reduce some errors, trying to speed up some of that stuff so we don't fill this out over and over again. And uh, again, depending on your different files, 
in your part, you might have multiple sets of these. So easy to kind of swap between a bunch of lists. Now we're going to get into the fun stuff of some template work. Why do we need templates? Well, your templates save your part assembly or drawing at a good starting point, right? So that's what these templates are doing. Uh, it saves time because, right, there's a lot of different stuff to go through in your template. So when we start getting into that, right, if we go to open, we just open up any one of these templates. It doesn't really matter at this point. But if we go to tools options, and we go over to our document properties. Remember, all of these properties are changeable. So I want a good starting point where I don't have to always go in here and start changing our stuff all over again. I want this to be set it and forget it. As soon as I hit that template, these should be set. So that's what we're, we're working towards, right? If I go to system options, remember system options are globally throughout SOLIDWORKS. It doesn't remember what document you're in. These ones are document specific, and that's why you want templates. So you might have different customers. You might have different logos that go with those customers, and you might have different sheet sizes depending on what you're trying to convey, right? So we might have A, B, C, D, and E, just different sheet sizes we can jump into. We also have company uniformity. So when we save those document properties, they might have specific fonts, arrows, units, and styles that go with each one. So I don't want to have to mess with that each time I make a drawing. So fun fact here. Uh, I put this in here. It's really neat guide to kind of go by what is an actual size of an ANSI E or an architectural E or a metric A0 piece of paper. And this has got like, you know, your various sizes in inches and whatnot. So it's kind of cool to be able to compare it. I think everybody's seen these a bunch of times, but they don't know exactly how big those sheets are. So I put that in here for some, a good reference page. All right, so now we're starting getting into this template world. So there's three different uh, files, I guess, we need to kind of work with here. We have our drawing document. So our drawing document is our document properties, any kind of custom properties, and display settings. We have a drawing sheet. So our drawing sheet kind of hosts, you know, the scales, uh, what size page we have, uh, type of projection, if it's first or third. Next few datum labels, kind of all up in this area. That's what the drawing sheet is holding. Um, these, sorry, when I say three, it's only two. You have this, this one and this one are kind of in the same zone, um, just different property areas to, to go to. This sheet format is its own file. It's actually copied onto your drawing document file. So it's not linked any way, shape, or form. Uh, it's copied and pasted. So whatever is on that sheet and you copy and paste it, it's going to be kind of locked. But that's going to host your title block, your border, any type of table anchors, notes that you might want to always bring along with you, links to custom properties that we've already done, and custom property names and values here. So we're going to dive into this world and see how we can interact here. The first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to grab one of these very blank ones. Uh, there's no sheet format attached to this. And so when there's no sheet format attached to it, it's going to automatically launch this sheet format size. And from here, we'll select, you know, how big or what kind of orientation we want our sheet to be. These other ones, right, I've already have them labeled, but they would also, they would automatically include that piece. So you won't get this, uh, extra box here. We are then going to right click. We're going to mess with some of these property fields. We're going to automate some of this stuff. We're going to link a property to our uh, part. Again, a lot of words here. That's why uh, Chris sent out that uh, link earlier where we can kind of see all this stuff here. Um, our property names, so this is PRP versus a PRP sheet versus a SOLIDWORKS property name or PRP sheet SOLIDWORKS property name. They're all slightly different as far as where are they getting their information from. So long story short, this is what we're kind of looking for. Um, so our red here is going to be drawing custom properties. So there's a whole set of 
custom properties you can put at the drawing level as well as the part level. So these blue ones are coming from the part level. These SOLIDWORKS ones are special ones. So like your sheet size scale, um, if you were to have yeah, sheet one of one, et cetera, versus the blue is pulling in from like your, your alloy, what kind of finish should be put on it, um, what the weight might be, that kind of stuff is coming from the model versus your red you might have all this stuff at the drawing level instead of the part level. Kind of depends on your whole scheme there, but this is just kind of like posting where they might be coming from. All right, let's dive into that. Uh, we'll throw a description on here and we'll see this thing kind of come together here. I'm going to cancel out of this. So your part is right here. So if I hit my file properties, notice there's nothing here other than the format size, right? So you can have a bunch of different properties that are here. That would have been that red, like dates, and et cetera, can be populated in this area. Can be. Go ahead and close that for now. Let's go ahead and do a new one. Again, I'm just going to grab a drawing ANSI inch. Uh, so when I say OK, notice it didn't have a sheet format attached to it yet. And that's what we're going to go ahead and edit. So I'm just going to grab this one looks fine. You kind of see it comes with all my borders, et cetera. Uh, the first thing I want to do here is I'm going to add a description. I'm just going to stick with a few, few fields here, guys. We can get totally crazy. We can start linking everything, but I can get away with this whole thing with just linking a few fields. Uh, the first thing I want to do here is I'm going to right click in order to get access to my sheet format is I can right click anywhere. I can right click down here. There's the edit sheet format here. Uh, I can right click here, edit sheet format. Pretty much edit sheet format is getting me access to edit the title block. So what we can do in order to link some stuff is I need to insert some text first. So I'm going to go and say, note. I'm going to put it here. And I'm, in order to link a property, we need to go to this button here, which is link to property. I want to, I don't want to do the document because the document is not going to actually host my descriptions or any of that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and say the model that would be found here. And you can kind of see that by doing it completely from scratch, I don't have any of that stuff to kind of go with. It's only going to list the SOLIDWORKS, right? So if you've done this, you kind of get bound up this way. So I'm going to go ahead and escape real quick. I'm going to jump out of this, and I'm just going to insert a quick part. Let's jump back to this, this guy. So we have all this. We have, yeah, so I'll say apply it. So now we actually have fields here that we can mess with. So I'm going to insert this guy into here. It doesn't matter where. Only thing that we're trying to do here is get some values to work with. Okay. So when I right click and then I go to edit sheet format and I do that annotation again, and I try and link this, so I'll go to the uh, link property the model. Now you're going to see that we have a different list. This list is, you know, finish, weight, material, etc. So you can kind of see that material is already here, the finish is already here, the names here, um, and the color of base is here. So let's get out of that. We'll just move the title, the color of base here. Right? So you kind of see Right, the color of base is being pulled from that description field from the other value. If I were to do something like this, was to just drop a no right here. So we're going to call this like 3D Mobo from motherboard. Notice that that value is not linked. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to update for us. That's okay. That could be a image for you know, Boeing or SpaceX, you know, SpaceX has been in the news a lot lately. Um, it could be their logo. Uh, so yeah, we'll just go ahead and save this. So now that we have it, it's right, we've gone through a lot. We're going to pretend that we've gone through all the names here. We've expanded some of these out, right, and made it our own. 
um, template or title block. So in order to save it, there's a couple different ways you can do that. So we can go to File, Save Sheet Format. You can pay attention to where you're stuffing this so that we can go get it again later. So I'm just going to call this A, the landscape. I'm going to add uh, WebEx at the end of this. You guys have to remember, I've done this a few times, as you can tell. So um, we're going to grab that WebEx one. Notice it's saving it as a totally different format or totally different file. All right? Let me jump out of that. All right, so you notice that we can't save this right now with this part in it. And when I say save it, I'm saying that we've, we're pretending that we've gone through our properties, we've changed like arrowheads and text fonts and all that kind of stuff. What we wanna do is we wanna save this as a template now. I wanna be able to start with the 3D motherboard and all of these certain text fields in their correct spots. So I don't wanna have this in there. So I have to delete this out. And we'll go ahead and rebuild it because it's asking. Notice it kicks some of that stuff out, but that's okay. We'll go to File. We'll say Save As. And this is going to be a uh, drawing format or drawing template. All right. And again, we'll pay attention to the right spot where it's kind of going. Uh, notice it's going to a gripper demo. Should be fine. I know where that is. And it's going to be called Colorado Base. I'm going to override that one. Okay, so I'm going to close this. And when I go ahead and say new, right, here's my Colorado base. Right, it comes in just like so. Like it comes in with a 3D motherboard. That would be graphical representation. It comes with a placeholder. If we were to go ahead and bring in our uh, like a view for our Colorado base again, just to kind of keep it simple. And we stamp it, then all of our text changes because it's reading from this file now. It's reading all of those from here. Okay, so we kind of get to that portion of it, um, getting through and creating a template. Remember, it's just file, save as template after we've saved our sheet format as well. Now we get to the interesting point of what happens when we have a customer come in and they change their logo, right? Well, I really don't want to change 400, you know, drawings that they might have. So instead, I'm going to edit this one. So I'll right click and I'll say edit sheet format. And instead of uh, 3D, maybe it's like, CATI, WebEx, Motherboard, right? Just going to kind of change it up just a little bit. So I need to save this sheet format again, right? Because it, I've changed this one, but I want to save it so I can reuse it. So I can go to File, Save Sheet Format, and I'm going to say WebEx, but I'm going to make it two, right? I might want both of these. I'll just throw two at the end of it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. I don't need to save it. And I'm going to say File, New, Colorado Base, say OK. Now you say, like, well, you changed it. Well, I changed it on the other one, but I need to relink this guy. I need to copy him in. So this might be something you just opened, uh, you know, old drawing or so. So what we need to do is we need to do right click and we need to say edit sheet format. Oh, sorry, not that one. Properties. So here I can reload the one that I saved or I can go browse and I can go find a different one. So here's my WebEx2 that I did apply changes. Right now it's the WebEx one. So you can see that I've copied over a, an entirely different um, sheet format file. I need to now take this and save it as my new template because it might be a new 
you know, logo and stuff. So I'll say file, save as, and I need to make it another drawing template. So I'll redo it and I'll put it back over that Colorado base. Go ahead and close this. And when I say new again, I'll bring that back up again. You see now it comes back in with a CATI WebEx motherboard. So that's how we can kind of open up an existing drawing, either reload the one that we changed or browse to one that we've just made and swap them out. Okay, so that, again, that's kind of like your, your, meat, your uh, the meat and potatoes of some of this stuff here is those specific steps. Um, if you had other blank sheets down here, you would have to right click, go to the uh, properties, and reload that page or browse to it, depending on if you saved over the top or if you made a new one. If you made a new one, you have to go browse, reload if it's the same. Um, that way it will pretty much copy and paste it back into the right spot. Okay. Let's bring in that uh, motherboard again. So I'll say new here, or next, and We'll create multiple views, why not? All right, so you can see I've created these couple views here. I can say, okay, I'll delete that tapped hole. Uh, what, one thing that we can do here is we can bring in all of the dimensions that are used to create this guy. So if we go to annotations, the model items, most of us are used to you know, like redimensioning everything with the smart dimension. If we go to model items, right, we can grab selected feature, we can specify which dimensions that we want to be brought in, right? So if you want to bring in just like our whole call outs, uh, mark for drawing, not mark for drawing, any kind of patterns, um, tolerance dimensions, et cetera, this is what you would bring in specifically. Um, I'm just going to bring in mark for drawing and I'll say, instead of selected feature, I'll say, let's go with the entire model. So there we go. There's all the dimensions that were used to make this guy. Uh, you can go through here and you can make them all pretty, right? Branch them out, push them onto other views. Uh, if I were to grab this guy and I use the control key, I can actually bring it to, I can copy it to another view. If I use the, let's see if I can get another one, maybe this one, the shift key, I can hold shift and bring that to this view. And that shift key will move that dimension into this view for me. So you guys are like, well, that's cool, but then what can you do? Well, the benefit of doing it this way is I can actually change the dimensions on the fly here. So let's say that this motherboard needs to be bigger, right? If I need it to be bigger, I would have to right click, maybe say open, it would then open up over here. I would go to you know, whatever sketch created that, mess with that sketch this way. But if I have it, the inserted model items, these dimensions are real. So if I needed this to be bigger, I would just type in like 310 or something. Notice I get the hashing. So all this hash mark means that this whole thing needs to be rebuilt. So I'll say rebuild. And you can see it shifted just a little bit. It got a little bit bigger. That is the specific case with this. It actually grew just a little bit. Right, so it is uh, 16.205 inches. Oh, this is probably in metric. I may mess that up a little bit. Yeah, looks like I messed, messed that up just a tad. So you can see it grew though. But that's kind of the cool part, right? If we were to grab this and modify it a little bit, it's easy to just double click these dimensions right here. You actually get a real dimension box and it's, then we just hit the rebuild, rebuild your actual model in the background. You can't do these with the smart dimension inserts. So if I were to smart dimension insert this one, it's the same one, but I can't double click it. I can't double, I can't change the value here. This is like a read only dimension. This one is linked. So now I can go through and I can edit really quickly all of the dimensions that made up my model here.
trying to get to some of the other stuff that I wanted to cover. Which was automatic um, template. So let's say that I always wanted a front side right view. We can do that with our uh, insert. Let's say it's drawing view, and we can say predefined view here. So we can say, you know, like, hey, I want a predefined. What that does is I can go here and I can stamp that one. That one's going to be my front. I can say, I can then project it off of that. So if I go back to drawing and I say project view, I can go, there's my top side isometric. So let's delete this stuff because we're kind of done with that. Let's expand these out. So this is just predefined views that I've already got, you know, maybe I've done a little bit of work, put them in the right, you know, projections and draft quality and using the right parent styles and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they're just predefined views. I projected the first one and I can project just as well as I can with anything else. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and say file. I'll say save as and I'll save it as a drawing template. Again, I'm just saving over the top. So from here, I can go make drawing from the part assembly, grab that base. And when I do that, it probably put in my front, top, right, isometric view. So that way I don't have to always go through the whole kit and caboodle about everything. Uh, if I were to do a new one again, and I bring it out without doing the, the other way, right? I kind of get these views. I have to right click that the view here and I have to say insert model. And then it'll, I can either browse or find it. Again, because that's always the front or the top, front, right view, isometric, it doesn't matter which one of these you right click on because it deals with the exact um, front, top, right view of the model. So you don't have to worry about that stuff. But that's how you can kind of speed up some of your, your inserts, right? Uh, then you don't have to worry too much about um, inserting and getting that all up to date. But you can see here, I got the WebEx motherboard. I'm reading the Colorado phase. Um, all that stuff is already here. Oh, so it's already, yeah, it's already on sheet two, too. There we go. So I already had that one to save this sheet two, but you can kind of see it, right? It can either come in with sheet twos, threes, fours. Uh, you get all the way across that whole board there. I'm pretty sure that's all I wanted, I had for you guys. 